Hello, my most amazing artists. Um, today we are going to start, oops, sorry. Today we are going to start out in pencil. Um, we have to do a couple of things before we get to our pastels. So the first thing that you're going to figure out is what is on your animal's mind. What is the thing that your animal desires the most? There is no wrong answer for this. The only wrong answer for this is if you put a bird because you're not allowed to have a bird. I know um, Paul Clay's thing was cat and bird, but we are not allowed to have a bird today. Um, so just as a reminder, let me get my little pad of paper out here. Um, the artist we are studying is Paul Clay. Everybody say Paul Clay. Okay, so, and that is how you spell Paul Clay. So I might ask that at the end. The um, style of art that we are studying, Paul Clay actually had several styles of art, but Cat and Bird was a specific style that came from his dreams. Okay, so when you're talking about art that is inspired by dreams or art that looks like a dream, it is called surrealism. So that is that, and that is how it is spelled, surrealism. I might actually ask you how it is spelled. So... Um, technically, if you break these words down, this means real, obviously, real. Realism is the closest that you can do to having a photographic image of something. Sir means under or beneath. Under realistic, beneath realism. So that is surrealism. Okay, that's the breakdown of the word, sir and realism. Okay. So I'm going to put that up here. So today you're figuring out what your, your animal is most um, in love with, most desires, most wants in its whole world. So right now I'm just going to put that, that weird um, paint palette and I'm going to have that as what my cat most desires. Maybe, maybe with a, a paintbrush going across it. I don't know. Like that. Okay. So my cat most desires a paint palette with a paintbrush on it. Um, so that's what my cat wants. Now, the other thing that I have to design is the background. You are going to have a background that has two things. It has to have a shape pattern and it has to have a line pattern. So what kind of line pattern are you going to have? I don't know. You could have stripes going down. It's like wallpaper in the background. Think of it as wallpaper. So you could have stripes going down. You could have zigzags across um, the background of the paper. And maybe that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do because I haven't done zigzags in a while. So I'm going to do zigzags like this. I'm going to figure out it would have gone here, would have gone here. So this would go up right here. Um, and probably don't see that part of it, but I'm going to see this part of it come down. I'm trying to follow the line of what I would have made. Okay, that's a good zigzag. Over here, you would probably just see this and this coming down. And maybe over here you would see that, okay? Um, over here you might see this coming up from behind the palette and coming back down over here. Um, you might see this coming up. Um, you might see this being like this. And this being like that and coming back up over here. Zigzags are hard, whoa, okay. Um, that's good for that side. Over here, I would see something coming down like that. Um, I would probably see something over here 
and maybe something coming up like that and then coming back down and then going up and then I can follow that much easier than just guessing. Okay, so this would come down, go like that, come over, go like that, and then maybe you would just see a little thing right there. Okay, so those are my zigzags in the background. So now I have a line design, but now I need a shape. Sorry about that. Okay, so what kind of shape do I want in there? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe dots, maybe polka dots make my life easier. I'm going to have big polka dots. Be you don't want any small, super small details because you are going to be um, coloring these. And it's really hard when they are super small details to color them. So I'm just making my life easier by having them pretty big, pretty big. Trying to have them in the same spot so they follow a pattern. And I want them in between where the um, zag, zigzag is. Zag or the zig, I don't know. Um, this would probably be right there. This would probably have one right there. Um, this would be over here. This would probably be right there. This would probably be right there. Just guessing where the pattern would go. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so I have my, oh, maybe a little one up here. Maybe another one right here. Um, so now I have my pattern of where things would be. And I have my line design as well as my shape design. So now I have to figure out, um, you guys already have the eyes done, hopefully. Now from that, you are going to figure out what your cat's face is going to look like. So. If I have yellow as my eye color, I'm gonna go to its complementary color. Who can tell me what the complementary color of yellow is? Do you remember complementary colors? Cause we've already done this. Okay, if you said purple or violet, you were, oops, you were correct. I was a little too excited there. Knocked my um, tripod. Okay, so violet is gonna be what my cat's face is in. Violet is the main color. If you wanna write that on the back, oop, there's a different one on the back. If you wanna write that on the back um, of your paper that your main color for your head is going to be violet, that's great. Now we're gonna talk about something new with color. So we're gonna talk about, okay, so my main color is violet. We're gonna talk about analogous colors analogous colors okay analogous colors are basically colors that are similar to your color but not the same so if we look on the color wheel analogous colors of violet which is similar to violet but not the same as purple are red violet and blue violet. They are kind of the uh, brother and sister of the main color. So they're the ones right next to the main color. So if your main color is blue, the brother and sister of blue are blue purple and blue green. Blue purple and blue green. If your eye color is green, then the brother and sister of green are yellow green and blue green, yellow green and blue green. If your eye color is yellow, the brother, or if you're, um, it's not the eye color. If your complementary color is yellow, then the, the analogous colors to that, the brother and sister are yellow orange and yellow green. 
yellow green yellow orange if your eye color is blue your complement is orange and your analogous colors are yellow orange and red orange yellow orange and red color red orange if your eyes are green your complementary color is red and the analogous colors of red are red orange and red purple red orange and red purple and then we're back to if your eye color is yellow the complementary color is violet and analogous colors to violet are red violet and blue violet this is a complicated thing. Analogous colors are, are pretty complicated. So if you don't get it right away, please feel free to ask me. Say, Mrs. Ciotti, my eye color is orange. What do I do? What do I do? And I will help you out if your eye color is orange. Complementary color is blue. And analogous colors to blue are blue, violet, and blue, green, just as an example. So I'm going to set that aside for now. My main color is violet. So you are going to have a um, chalk pastel, also called soft pastel, set that somewhat looks like this. This one is brand new. Um, yours might not be brand new. Probably is not brand new unless you're the first class of the day. Even if you are the first class of the day, um, it's probably not brand new. Um, half of them are. So if you're the first class of the day, half of them are brand new. See how this it let me back this up a little. Okay. See how this is like a sleeve? So you slide it. Let me do it again so that you could just see. Because you're gonna be doing this for a couple of weeks, and I don't want you to ruin my boxes because they're pretty new. Even if they're not brand new, they're pretty new. Okay, so we have a box like this. First of all, there's this sleeve that slides off. You could slide it off this way. You can slide it out that way. It slides both ways. So I'm gonna slide this off, put this sleeve up to the side. Then this is just like a regular box. I'm gonna open it up, put it to the other side, put that top on top of the sleeve. Then there's these things. Chalk pastels are very fragile. So that's why they have this um, spongy thing in there so that they don't get destroyed. This is brand new. Look how beautiful it is. Um, yours might not look like this, but it looks similar to it. Um, it should have at least 80% of the colors uh, that are here and it should have all of the major colors. So I had yellow as my color. Therefore, the complementary color to yellow, once again, is purple. So uh, in my um, container right here, now all of the colors might not be in the same places as in here. They probably aren't. They've probably be, been put back in different places. But this would be my purple. Okay, either this or this. Doesn't really matter. So if you have one that's brand new or that the colors are in similar places to when they began, then you can easily see that these are going to be your red violet. Okay, these are going to be your analogous colors. So let me take out that purple first. And then maybe I'm going to take out this red violet because I like it. Um, over here, this is going to be your blue violet. So I think I'm going to take this out. This is my blue violet right here. If they're not set up like this, they might be in different places. But you can, there's several options of what you can pick. So... If you, do, if you didn't find a blue violet, you could use that one, you could use this one, whatever is the closest that you think is the closest, okay? So I'm gonna set that aside. So these are my three colors that I'm gonna use on the cat's face. Now this is like the lightest one to my eye and this is probably the darkest one. So I'm gonna do the lightest one in the middle of his cheek. And notice I am using, oops, Notice I am using the side of my chalk pastel, the side of it, okay? I'm just putting it straight down because that's going to get a lot of color on there pretty fast. I'm going to do that up here too, and I'm going to do it up here too. So that's my lightest color. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit right here, just a little bit on the middle of the nose and maybe most of the 
actual heart nose is going to be that color. I'm going to do a little bit on the chin, just a little bit, and a little bit on the middle of the neck neck sorry okay so now out of these two i think this is lighter and this is the darkest so i'm going to take the darkest i'm going to go to the outside right here and just make like an outline kind of maybe it is a little thicker than just once over outline my last color is the true purple that I had. So, by the way, if you didn't want to use the true purple and you wanted to use lavender instead, that's fine. That is your choice. That is your artistic choice. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in the rest of the space in between. Rest of the space in between. You don't have to be as quick and as messy as I'm doing mine okay so that's good I'm gonna put this back now oh I put it in the wrong place that's fine now what I want to do now is I want to smush so I'm taking my fingers that are pr not that dirty yet but remember this gets really dirty if you want to wear a smock wear a smock if you want to roll up your sleeves roll up your sleeves this does get pretty dirty especially with this part when you're when your sleeve touch, touches your paper sometimes, it gets really dirty. So I am going to hold my paper right here and I'm going to start with the lightest color and smush it into the paper. You'll notice that this fills in all of your little um, bald spots that you might have. I'm starting in the middle of my pinky color and then moving to the outside. Now, the reason that we use this particular media, which is soft pastels, the media is soft pastels, is because it gives a dreamlike quality. It's kind of cool in that it's like fuzzy. It's like how you remember dreams. They're, they never have like crisp edges. They're always kind of fuzzy in the details. So now I've moved on to the uh, purple and I'm trying to blend that with my pink okay so I don't want it to just be pink and then a line and then purple I'm blending them together blend 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 oh I didn't do this pink and now my my finger is dirty so now that's not very pink at all I'm gonna use a different finger because I didn't do this pink and I didn't do this pink okay so now I'm doing the purple Purple, purple. You guys probably noticed that I didn't do all the pinks. I should have done all the pinks. I'm not even going to touch that one. Purple, purple. And now I'm getting some blue because this is a very small area, but I'm going to get the blue anyway. And I'm blending the blue purple into the purple. Bluish purple, purplish blue into the regular purple. So I don't want to take up all your time and do my whole cat once again. Your whole animal might not be a cat. So I am pushing all of this color around so it takes care of all those bald spots and it blends. It blends one color to the next color. So I did about half of my cat. Remember, I have a lot of crumbs over here. When you have a lot of crumbs, you pick up your paper and you put it on your, let me move this. You put it on your um, free draw paper that is over here. So I'm taking my paper. Can I even make this bigger? I don't know. No, I can't. Okay, so I'm putting it on the free draw paper. Tap, tap, tap to get all of those crumbs off as much as possible. Notice my hands are dirty, so where I grabbed it, there's fingerprints. I'm not gonna even touch this part yet. Leave that for next week. Just try to get your whole cat done today. All right, good luck guys, have fun, and uh, don't be too messy. Okay, one thing I forgot, when you are done, you are going to first hand in your project. You always hand in your project first. That's going to my cart. I will probably have a stack of free draw, clean free draw paper. Put a 
clean piece of free draw paper on top of yours and then put it on the pile. The clean free draw paper is to stop your drawing from getting on anybody else's drawing. So make sure you do that to be respectful to your neighbors. Um, okay, so when I put this away, I'm gonna make sure everything is flat. This isn't flat, so make sure all of the pastels are flat. Then put, if you still have a tissue paper, most of them do. If you still have sponge, put that on top. Put this on top of that. Now, if you have a hard time sliding it back into its sleeve, then bring it to me, I will help you out. If you don't have a problem, then you don't have a problem. It should slide pretty easily. So just as a redo, I put one end in first. I'm making sure that it's nice and flat, one end in first, then I have to pull that out a little bit to get the other end in and then slide it together. Okay, then you hand it in just like this. So I hope that solves that. Okay, see you, bye.